We're up to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Because, 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 because all our blocks are junk. And we're back and I got a treat probably saw it on the little figurine going across the map but got another block this is not a 351 this is a 302 from an Explorer but it's a block that's good because well let me show you the other block in case you missed it on my live stream on Facebook let me show you what's going on this here folks is what we like to call a uh, Damn it! Mode. So these are all deep. Fingernail catches on all of them. This is the 302 that we decided we were going to go ahead and build rather than that 351 over there because that one has issues. And then I pull the pistons out of this one. This one's got issues. So I found that block sitting on the back of my truck out there for $140, couldn't pass it up, went and grabbed it, ordered some rings for the pistons, and we're going to slap all this back together and be done with it for a short while, and then we'll upgrade it slowly and we'll build that 351 uh, at some point. I'm hoping this was the last of it. I got new cam bearings, I got a new cam, I got new uh, rod bearings, uh, new main cap bearings. I've got new piston rings. I've got new heads. I've got new rockers. I've got new lifters and push rods. I'm hoping this is it. I'm hoping we can get this thing back together and it runs great. So that cylinder there makes a lot of sense why the spark plug looks like this. That's the number one there. Remember we were talking about Trying to figure out what that was all about. Still don't know what this is all about in number five because there's nothing wrong with that cylinder. But we know what was going on in number one and what the issue was there. Maybe it was injectors for number five, but I've got a set of those Explorer injectors and we'll throw those in and see if those are better. But anyways, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start ripping this thing apart and get what we need out of it. We'll leave the cam inside of it with no reason to pull that out, but the timing cover needs to come off, the balancer, uh, chains, everything gotta come off of the front so we can throw it on the other one. And then we will take that block that's out there, we'll ding a ball, hone it, clean it up, get it prepped as much as we can for when the cam and everything else shows up. It might show up today, I don't know yet, I hope so. That way we can get most of it put back together. The rings definitely won't be here today. And then I'll have to tackle that one another day. Then we can gap them and everything else like that, which they're not uh, file fit. So they should be the right gap, but I want to open it up just a little bit in case we decide to spray this car. You heard that right. So we are in it to win it with this rebuild in the sense of we are going to run the piss out of it and throw everything we got at it to get some numbers some give you guys some numbers on what it's like to do a budget build even though i took the really long way around to get to this budget build and i'm kind of jinxing myself because it's not done yet but this will give you the idea of what gt40 intake and gt40 heads with roller lifters roller rockers and a b cam looks like with a stock ECM, stock mass air, stock throttle body, stock injectors. Whew. That's gonna be terrible. And then we'll throw a carb intake on it and maybe a carb and see what that's like. And then maybe a sniper, see what that's like. And then maybe the LS high ram Holly uh, sniper intake with 
injectors and harness and see what that's like. So that's kind of our journey that will possibly be going on. If at any point it derails, that's how things go. So hope you're ready for this journey. Let's get started. Get this engine block cleaned up and things put back inside of it. It's getting hot again. Okay, so we're all ready now. This guy here is ready to come apart. So we can throw everything in this guy. This one is cleaned up, cylinders are honed. Uh, I sprayed it down with a pressure washer, cleaned it up with degreaser and everything else, and then immediately hit it with the water displacement 40 and wiped down all the cylinders and everything else, make sure there was no water left in there or anything. All the cylinders look good, got a nice cross hatch in them. And this thing is ready to go back together. While we're getting started on this guy, go ahead and cover up this one because, well, not exactly a sterile, clean environment for the, uh, the dust to keep it out of the old. So this should do for now. Should be good. Okay, let's get back at it. Oh, some parts showed up. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is a B cam from Ford B303. Um, I'm trying to remember what lift and duration we got on here. I know it's not crazy. Uh, I'll pull it out of the box and I'll show you later. Ooh, it ex built on my birthday. How fancy. Anyways, let's get this timing cover off so we can get this chain and everything. And the crank out, I can polish those journals and throw it in the other one because all of our bearings and everything else showed up as well. That is neat. Yeah, clean this sucker too. Don't need the smog pump bracket anymore. I mean, that's going right back on wherever the smog pump went last time. And then, of course, the hidden ones. How nice of them. Where's my wrench? Ooh. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. In case anybody forgot. This timing cover is disgusting. Gusting, so it's definitely getting the bath when it comes off. And we got seals for all this business. Oh, why? Oh. Mm. We'll let it ride. This thing is crusty. It just scrapes off though. That's good, I guess. Okie dokie. Good thing that thing is loose. Nice. Good, 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 good. Get you into another home. Oh, yeah. That a girl. All right. Let's get this crank out of here. Cranky, cranky. This will make a good uh, stroker block. Board over. So cross hatching looks fantastic in all the rest of the cylinders. There is, feels like a little, well, you can't feel a, a lip at the bottom of the cylinder, but you can definitely see it. Oh man. So journals definitely need polished. There is some grooves, but you can't feel it with your fingers. So that's good. So we'll get that polished up. But anyways, this will make a good stroker block. But that one's getting stroked first, then this one. Because I don't know what we would throw this back in unless we got like a Fairlane or a Galaxy or something really cool like that. Because um, it doesn't make much sense to put one back in here after putting that much money into it. Maybe if it was another one. 
But anyways, let's get this out. They make this neat little tool that pops the uh, main bearing caps off. I don't have that tool. It's not a tool that I own. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. See if it'll focus in there for you guys. You can probably see that pretty well. A little polish should do all right. There's no actual grooves or any here. It's just kind of copper on one side. Kind of wish I had that tool, to be honest. Be a little easier to get these out. No! Oh, you little B-I-T-C-H. That'll offend everyone but the illiterate people. Dang it! Oh, they got hot. That's faux show. It got hot. That one was a little blue. And not like on D dot and D or do. More heavy, heavy usage and heat. I don't know why I'm showing you all this. I know this block was just, just hurt. Just not taken care of. Sad to sad to day. Yeet. It's close enough. All in all, Journals don't look too bad. I think we'll be all right with a little bit of polish and then ship. Whoop. All right, set that aside, get it polished up. And we can throw the caps back on this thing and chuck it out the door for right now. Curious why this locked up. Cam, camshaft stopped spinning. That's an interesting thing. Curious. Yes, not that it matters, it's gonna stay right there. It's just curious that it doesn't spin anymore. Caps back on, throw it in the corner. We'll need to check to see if there's a spacer, like a thrust spacer or something on there. I haven't done a whole lot of these engines, so couldn't tell you from one to another how they mark their main bearing caps, but Ford in this particular engine is nice enough to mark it one, two, three, four, five and there's an arrow pointing to the front of the engine. So orientation is set. You don't have to bang dots into them or anything like that. Just put them back in. This thing can go in the trash. I mean, the corner. Take it easy. Take it easy. And shazam. Block is on the stand, ready to be put back together. So I need to go get a cam bearing puller and installer because the one that I have was not gonna work with this. So I'm gonna run and grab that, some emery cloth, some sort of polishing cloth for the crank, and then we will get started throwing this bad dog back together. Cause she ready. She might be ready. I'm definitely ready. So we'll go with that. I'll be back. Nighty night, little creep. Welcome back. Been a couple days, I'm waiting to get everything we need. Now I've got it, we've got everything we need to put the rotating assembly back in this thing, get us to a long block. Uh, was waiting on a cam bearing, pulling and got that, so we'll go ahead and knock out the cam bearings. Cam sitting over here behind me, we'll toss that in. I already gapped the rings and lifters have been sitting in oil overnight. I think we're ready to get this sucker in here. Yes, let's knock out these bearings. Oh, that thing is filthy. Now this thing was only like $60 off of Amazon, so I'm not expecting it to last forever, but it should be good enough to knock out some bearings, knock in some bearings, and then maybe for another job beyond that. If you're looking to do this all the time, probably wouldn't go with this kit. You'd probably get like a comp cam one or something along those lines. It's good enough for us for right now. Bear with me as I figure this thing out. Be mindful of the metal splinters. Ow, ow! Stab myself three times in a matter of a half a second. This is a very janky piece of equipment. All right, I think we're hooked up. We'll see. This is going to be sketchy. Put the bearings back in. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. 
You betcha, eh? Don't you know? Okay, okay, we're getting better with it. Cam bearings are out. Now I gotta throw the new ones in. All right, so I gotta see. The oil galleys are directly above the journal. So when we put this back together, we're throwing them in that way. Let me clean out these journals. We're gonna throw the new ones in. All right, let's put these suckers in and give it the best chance of seating here. The uh, journals are practically, or the oil feed is practically straight up on these, which makes it super easy. Bump this one in and then we'll get the rest. Oh, you can see right down through her. That one is good to go. Hells. Yeah, let's do the rest. All right, so all those are knocked in. Now it's time to start feeding that cam in there so we can set our lifters in and put the timing gear on. We'll put the cover on right now because I want to clean that up and then uh, we'll throw it on. So I got some assembly lube. We'll sling it on there. And I don't know about putting it on the lobes yet. I think we'll get it on the bearings itself so they'll slide through and uh, go from there. So the uh, lobe lift and duration for this guy, I'm gonna be up here. Like I said, this is like a um, entry level street cam. Mixed with 1.7 rockers, it can be decently tasty, but we're doing 1.6. Going back with factory, I don't want to change the valve covers. Blah, 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 blah. Alrighty. Here's our little feller. Start throwing some assembly lube, stick it in here. always the least fun part about this. You just feel like you're hitting everything all the way through. All right. I'm going to scoot it back out and throw some more grease on it or some more oil just so we're in our spot. We know there's some sort of lube on there and I'll drop some down through these journals as well. Feels pretty tight, pretty free. I like it. All right, now some down through these journals. I cleaned these out earlier, so I'm not flushing metal down through. Sweet. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's be clear on that. All right, so I went with sealed power on pretty much everything, um, except for the rod bearings or a clevet bearing. There ain't a whole lot of options on some of this stuff. So you take what you can get. That's what I'm getting at. That's good for it. Alrighty then. All right, crank bearings going in. Goop these up and we'll clean off that crank, spray it out, spray out all the journals again, just to make sure, and then we'll drop it in. All right, let's set this sucker in here. It's all cleaned up. We'll put the seal on too. I gotta grab that out of the box. Rear main. All right. Throw some goop on that. Toss it in. Somebody probably gonna yell at me for putting that on before torquing down the main caps. It is what it is. 
haven't had them leak this way. All right, main caps. I need to know what happened to my paper towels. That's what I need to know. I need to know right now. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these caps on and then we'll get back into it with the valve train. All right, now that's all torqued down. Let's throw some lifters in there and the dog bone and spider to hold it in there. I'm gonna goop up these holes. There's gonna be plenty of oil on the lifters, but I just feel like this should be done. You know what I'm saying? All right, here comes the messy part. Throwing all these bad dogs in here. This uh, assembly lube is pretty goopy. feel like it should be pointed out as I'm doing this. I am not a professional engine builder. I am doing this as a budget, to the best of my knowledge, build. Did some work on our race car engines, but most of the time they were built out of house. The last one. Save that for later to dunk. Dog bonies. All right, that is in. Shall we start dropping some pistons? I think so. All right, so when I gapped these rings, I remember I said earlier that I was going to gap them a little bit wide so we could maybe spray on this. So general rule of thumb, I think, is uh, 0.05 um, per inch of the bore size itself. So a four inch bore, it leaves, that puts us at like 20 thou. Uh, I gapped each one of these at um, 22, 23. So it's, it's just barely, just bigger. Um, but I think that's just enough to where you can spray on this and we're not going to end up snapping the top of pistons off and breaking rings and shit. Cover your ears, son, and home. And stuff like that. So these are those Clevet rod bearings. Whole nice set of them. Next, so first one's done. We'll go through and I'll push them down and tighten them up. As long as they're clear of the lobes. Jam on. All right, I'm going to knock in the rest of these and then we'll be pretty much done. I'll see you in a minute. Oh, well. All right. So all of the lower end uh, rotating assembly is in. We've got ourselves a long block. Cam is in. The uh, roller lifters are in. Dog bones, all that stuff. Pistons, connecting rods, all those bearings are in. It was a hell of a time keeping dust and everything out of the inside of these bearings. It's wiping, cleaping, wiping, cleaning, uh, assembly lube, throw it in. It was interesting. So all that is done, all of it's in. Next thing that needs to go on, we need to throw on the timing chain and the gears. I'll put that on uh, after I clean it up. But that's gonna be it for today's episode because it's late, I'm tired, and 
there ain't no way I'd get the rest of this in the next in this episode. It'd be like an hour and a half long. Maybe you guys are into that. I don't know. But for me, I'm gonna call it a night. We're gonna finish. We've got a long block ready to go back together with the uh, heads and the rest of the valve train. And you'll see that all in the next episode. Thank you for sticking around and watching me thrash on this thing and build it in basically the middle of the desert. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you got any recommendations or saw anything that you had probably done differently. I'm open to all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I'm not a machinist or an engine builder. I've done it a couple times. And this is the budget build the best way that I know how. But that's going to be it. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching. And as always, have fun.